So today we are going to uh, say, try to finish or or nearly uh, the topic about the design process uh, for uh, for emit intelligence. Uh, before seeing the last uh, three or four steps, uh, I'd like to spend some minutes uh, in describing uh, the first step. Okay, because it's actually uh, the next work that you're going to do, deliverable number one. So right now, today, we had a first pass through the projects, uh, and for the successful project, your next step uh, is to prepare this uh, deliverable one. Let me show you the template of the information that you need to put. So first of all, we call it deliverable, but it's not actually a document to be delivered. Uh, it's a list of information that you should integrate into the website of your course. So as soon as you provide all the GitHub information, we create a GitHub group. From the GitHub group, you can create the GitHub pages um, branch and start publishing your website, okay? So uh, your website that you, that you will publish with the GitHub Pages tool uh, will need to contain the information that for the moment uh, is required by deliverable number one. Okay, so we created a Word template just to, you, to ease you, you know, to make it easier to write, uh, but try not, not to, don't link the, the document in the website. But, but design the website in order that in different sections of the website there is the information. For example, one information is the group members. I put that at the beginning of the document because it's easier not to, to, to see it in that place. In the website, probably you will have, an, I don't know, a, a contact section or a people section where you put all the names and pictures or, or something like that. So it's in a different part. You may design the website how you, how you like most, okay? We are not evaluating the, 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 the quality or the, or, or the graphics of the website or the organization. But try to find the better place, the best place, uh, to display each of these uh, information items. Hmm? Okay, so what do we need uh, in deliverable one, which is due at the end of the month? Project name, project acronym, and group composition. Okay. The vision. Now, a vision is a, a, we have some comments here that try to explain, a brief summary of what the system does for the user. Actually, there are the same or nearly the same requirements from what we have been doing here in the, in the initial project uh, definition document. So defining, but try to be more precise, define the target environment. So what is the ambient we are referring to? Who are the users? Okay, trying to define the target users. Uh, if, if you have any additional stakeholders, you may define them. And how the environment supports the users from the user point of view, which is a crucial uh, sentence, of course. And what problems will be solved or will be tackled by the system? What, are, what will be the benefits for the users and for the ambient? Absolutely avoid describing the technology or making some technology, technology, technical choice. Okay, it's actually the, the project description that we are, we are discussing these days uh, with more space, uh, better written, with more explicit items. As I said, more like I, as a general rule of thumb, uh, maximum one page and maybe pictures if you want. Okay, so this is the first. Uh, Information trying to write uh, and explain better your project idea. And then try to list, uh, of course, the four main steps. Uh, that's why we are fighting so much in these days uh, about uh, ensuring that every project has a reasoning and sensing and acting and interacting part. So that you can list uh, or write somewhere in your web page. Uh, why, no, what, what is the sensing part of the project, what is in the reasoning and acting and so on. Huh? So this is something that we are discussing here. It's, uh, uh, it didn't make sense to do 
before today because we still had a lot of, uh, let's say, points to clarify, but now that the projects are finished, are fixed, you can try to be explicit, okay? It's a checklist for yourselves, okay? What are the main important points in the project? And you can start asking yourselves, what are the MEA features? You remember the first class? We defined six different features that an MEI system should, should possess, should have. Should, should be sensitive, should be responsive, should be adaptive, transparent, ubiquitous, and intelligent. It's not required that your project uh, qualifies well or uh, applies to all of these features, okay? Some, some might, might, not, might, might not apply. Probably some features will not apply. Uh, maybe if the system is something big, uh, it will not be transparent, it will not be invisible, but uh, uh, something may, may not be adaptive if it follows just a, a very a specific uh, uh, algorithm or procedure. So the idea is try to check whether one or two or three or many of these features are in your system. Hmm? So to make it more intelligent, to make it more, let's say, interactive. So why the first four are mandatory, the other ones, let's say, are optional or make the system better, right? more ubiquitous and so on. So all, why, you know, for the MEI steps here, we ask that uh, all four steps must be well represented in a project. For the MEA features, it's so acceptable that some features are not developed in your specific project. So don't worry too much. Of course, if you find none of these in your project, then you can start worrying. But Okay. And then <clears throat> there is a section that we call open issues. This is actually a dynamic session in the deliverable or in the website. So what are the problems for which you don't have a solution yet? Of course, as you go, as you proceed with development, you will solve some problems that new ones will arise. So the idea will be to keep track in real time or more or less, or, or more or less in real time, so for every deliverable, updating this open issues section. What are the main problems that you expect your project will be facing? So is it a project that, you, that will be completed in three days? No. Why? Because there are a lot of, of issues to be solved. Which are the main ones? Not just the, the issues or the, the parts that require implementation work, but also the ones that, where you can see some challenges, something that you really don't know yet uh, if you would be able to do that or how it can be done. Or maybe there should be a sensor that is helping me, but I don't know it yet. Uh, you, we need to study it. So something that needs to be studied, something that needs to be verified. Now, there, if I were a, a project manager, I would say identify the risks in the project. What are the missing information pieces, the missing decisions, the missing uh, items that separate me from the success of my project, or at least for the end of my project. Hmm? What is non-trivial in the work? What kind of help do you need in learning what you need? Hmm? By the way, if we analyze, or if you write these open issues and we can analyze them, it may, it may be possible that we, we, we may help you, maybe not directly, but we may put you in contact with some people in the Polytechnic or in some company around that maybe is working on the topic. Uh, so if we can identify that you have a specific need, that you have a specific problem or risk or issue, then we might also come out and say, uh, but you could talk with this person, I will put you in contact because that person already worked on this topic. Hmm? So identifying the problems that make you more uh, mm, uh, uncertain about the, 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 the completion of the project is also a way for letting us help you better if we maybe can exploit some knowledge that we have, some people that we know and so on. And also in the open issues, remember to think about the demonstration of the project. So 
Now that we have uh, the idea being validated, so the idea is good, how are we going to demonstrate it? So our goal is not a product that we'll sell in two years, it's a demo, a prototype that will be shown in um, is this middle of March, April, May, June, three months. Okay, so start and think about the practical issues that make them, that might make the demonstration easier for you. And that's it. So actually, there's not a lot of work for this first deliverable. It's mainly rethinking in a more organized way at the project that we are being, let's say, brainstorming up to today. Writing better the vision, uh, uh, analyzing the steps and the features, and thinking about the open issues. And choosing a template and organization for the website, that is easy. You can start with, a, with a one of the many predefined templates and then you can update it as you go. Okay? So the first one is quite easy, deliverable one. And this is due, as I said, by the end of the month. Okay, of course we are, we are going to publish the templates also on the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the website and the material of the course. Okay, are there any questions? No. So we can proceed uh, with the implementation part of the project. Hmm? So uh, if you remember, last time we um, described uh, the requirement document. So a document where we collected all the things uh, that the system should do, the function requirements, and all the constraints uh, that we have uh, for implementing those function requirements, and we call them non-functional or in some case domain requirements. So we have the list uh, of what should be done. So right now, just imagine you are a different person and they just gave you this list of requirements. And they say, build this. So you might have no prior knowledge about why it was designed this way and so on. You just have a list of items that your system needs to satisfy. And so you can start breaking down this list, organizing activities, tasks, works, implementation, modules, interfaces, or whatever. So usually, this implementation phase, no, we, we tend to split it by first defining the architecture of the system. Uh, mind the word architecture here, here doesn't have the same meaning in the for the, the architecture students. So here we are um, speaking of uh, computer system architecture, hmm? not uh, buildings or or, uh, or houses or, or streets or whatever. So, but the, the general idea is uh, what are the components of the systems, of the system, and how do they relate to each other? Hmm? This is what, uh, for a computer scientist, uh, is the meaning of architecture. What are the pieces, how they are connected, in bare words. So we have a first, general view that we call the system architecture that defines the main items in the system. And then from the system architecture, we need to detail the hardware architecture, so what are the actual other components and the software architecture, what is the software running on these hardware nodes. And in some cases also the network architecture that describes how these are connected. All of these, uh, is part of the architecture definition task. So what goes into this definition? So what are the questions that we should ask ourselves in this phase? We are, remember, we are designing a system from which we already have the specifications. So we are moving now every step closer to the final system. So system architecture, which are, what are the main components of the system? And when I talk about system components, each component might be a device, maybe a computer, maybe a server, maybe a screen, maybe a software, maybe a library, maybe a camera. 
So they might be some hardware, some network, some software components. So but what, what are the, the big functional blocks that you need in your system? For example, computational nodes. What does it mean, computational nodes? CPUs. CPU in the system that needs to execute some software, some of your software. So it's, is it a centralized system? You only have one central node? Do you need more than one? One for the user and one centralized? Start thinking about how many CPUs you need, how many computers you need. Okay, maybe some are big computers, they're servers, some are just embedded system, Arduino boards, very small, and with very low computing power. But Anyway, there are computing nodes. Sensors and actuators. What are the sensors? Where are they? What they sense? We, we don't need yet the model and make and brand of a sensor. It will come later. But first, we identify which physical quantities do you need to sense, which, uh, uh, I don't know, information we need to get to measure, and if we need to measure that, where do we need to put the sensor? What data is, co is collected by the sensor? Where is this data sent? To which other software node or hardware node? Hmm? What are the user interfaces? So the user interface may be a mobile phone, may be a website, may be a screen on the wall, may be uh, some buttons somewhere, maybe uh, some lights in a box. So what are the, where are and which are uh, the objects that will be used by the user to interact with the system? And since we have one or more computational nodes, which are the functions deployed on each of these nodes? So the central node has, no, I don't know, the, the Imagine you are sensing some characteristic of a person, you know, the number of steps or calories or whatever. Okay, is this number stored on the wearable device or on the central server? It's a choice. You may, you may work either way or in the mobile. Uh, you may work in different ways, but you need to, to decide where to locate functions, where to locate data. Of course, every choice will have some pros and cons, huh? depending on maybe you have something uh, in a node which is more powerful, then you can do more complex computation, but uh, you need to have connectivity to do some, some, some work, or it depends. Now you need to think about this. So we are not yet committing to having a specific computer, a specific uh, device. But we are starting to, to think about how to arrange things in order to satisfy the functional and, and non-functional requirements. <coughs> Once we have the, the big picture, the general picture, we can start thinking about hardware and software. So hardware, right now, is sort of making uh, a, a list of items, a sort of a bill of materials, huh? a list of physical objects that will, that will be the components of my system. I don't need yet the exact model, the, the quantity of memory that they need. No, I just need to identify how many no, they are. How many computational nodes? It's already part of the system architecture. How many devices? What they do? Where they are to be installed? So we don't need the brand and model. This will come later. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a separate phase. Uh, these are maybe sensor actuators that we imagine. We think they will be available. Maybe we are not even sure that we can have them or buy them. Huh? It's for the next step. We are just saying that in this architecture, my system needs one actuator of this kind. And all the user interface devices, so, which are how many, and so on. And then the software architecture means defining on every, for, for every of these hardware nodes, uh, what are the software functions that every node needs to implement. So what are the functions in general 
And usually the function are just taken from the list of functional requirements because it's the software that implements functional requirements usually. And where are these functions running? If you have more than one computational node, I don't know, the login of the user, which is the node that is able to validate it. Where do I put this function? Hmm? And for every function, you need to locate it in your architecture. And since you have different pieces of software that run on different nodes, and they need to communicate, we need to ask ourselves, which information do they need to exchange? What data needs to be transferred from node number one to node number two? What data needs to be transferred from my mobile application to the web server? Uh, and this information about what data is transferred will, tra will be used as the basis for designing the API, for designing the APIs uh, of the different software modules. We'll come later to, to the API design, but uh, at least we need to know which functions and which data every node has and which data needs to be transferred between the nodes. We may use existing components or new software. So maybe there's a library, there's a tool that already does what they want. Well, I'm happier if I find something that's already doing what I need. Otherwise, I need to implement something by myself. So at the architecture level, I still don't care. I, what I'm concerned about is the functionality of every block. What are these blocks for? What do they do? What data do they manage? And what data do they exchange with each other? And if in designing the architecture, I can map some function to a block that is already existing, it's better for me because they will have less work to do later. Otherwise, it's some software that they need to work. So if you find when you're starting searching or understanding or building your system, try to search if you find a library, if you find a tool, if you find a component, uh, I'm speaking software here, that is already able to do maybe 80% of, of what you need. And start from that. Don't start from zero. Hmm? Um, so this is an example of my toy example of the wake up uh, system or what the system architecture might look like. So I, I can imagine that the user relates uh, as a phone that is able to, well, be used for interaction so the, the user can set the, the alarm time and the, the phone will also ring but also some music in the house can be used for waking up the person. And whether the phone or the music needs to play is decided by a central server which contains all the data and intelligence about how to manage the wake up. I also have a web interface to manage the interaction. You see that the, web, the, the arrow from the web interface is only from the user to the web and not vice versa because the web interface cannot, can't uh, wake up the user hmm. in any way. And the central data server is also linked to a Google Calendar because I don't need to re-implement all the calendaring functions and recurrence and so on. I can use an existing calendar and plug into that. No? And so by, uh, build my application by exploiting existing uh, system. And plus, I have some ambient sensor that can help me tell whether the person is up or not yet. Hmm? So this is a, a general picture. I already, but I already decided that I need to have a central data storage, centralized, with also a web interface for accessing this data, but also a phone with a mobile application. And also, I need to integrate in some way with the hi-fi system in my house and additional sensors and some external services. So some, we are starting to put big uh, uh, blocks uh, in my system. And then from the system architecture, I need to, to detail. Okay, ambient sensors, which ones? What do I need to measure? Well, maybe I need to measure or to detect whether the person is moving. So he woke up or not. Maybe it could be movement sensor or waste sensor under the bed. Depends. Do you need both? Only one? 
Let's list the options. Okay, so that I understand what are the physical objects that they need, and they need to start then after this, sorry, looking at real components for doing that. And uh, maybe I should have a local gateway for integrating the sensor data. So this sensor cannot be directly connected to a central server. These sensors don't have an internet connection, don't have a web client or web server inside of them. So they need to be connected to a computer that bridges, bridges information for them to the central server. So I need a computing node close to the sensors to bridge data from the sensor to the central server. I may have a mobile phone, okay. The server can be anywhere as long as it's connected and it's always on. And uh, also music. Music can be an audio amplifier plus a, a small PC, and this small PC may be the same that we use for managing the sensors, maybe. So do we need one or two different nodes, one for the music and the other for the sensors, or only one node can be? So these are the kind of questions no, that we ask while designing the, the hardware architecture. We have the general picture, and now we populate this general picture with the actual devices. And when we think about software, more detail comes up. Because actually, say, okay, we have this local gateway. The local gateway is the computer behind the sensors. What does it need to do? Well, it needs to send data to the central server. And question mark, I don't know yet. Do you need also to do some local processing? So it just, uh, is, is it a computer that just takes data from the sensor and pushes them to the server? Or does it need to do also some computing on the data locally before sending it to the server? Then we have the music server, and uh, what they do is to accept command from the central server. So this is going to be a, little, a bit more complex because while the ambient sensor only push data to the central server, so the central server needs to be reachable on the internet, but not the other way around. The music server is uh, the other way around, actually. It's the central server that needs to give orders, commands to the music server in order to play music. But if this is a computer in my home, behind my, my router, this is not directly accessible from the central server, which is somewhere else on the internet. How can an external node send a message to my internal computer in my internal network? So this is an issue that we need to solve. So when starting to think about the communications between the nodes, we are also defining the constraints for the network architecture. This is a network issue. How can I contact this? And there are many solutions for this. I can keep a socket open, a connection, I can use a, a, a reverse net, but there are many tricks at the network level for doing that. But we need, the, uh, but at least we start being aware that this can be an issue. Okay, the app, we need a software application on a mobile phone, and what are the functions that this application needs to implement? Settings, uh, changing settings, and communicating them to the central server, ringing when the central server Besides that, and relating user information to a central server. You know, this is used for when the user is not at home. No, the system, one of the requirements was that uh, when the user is not at home, the system should not ring in-house, but only ring uh, the mobile. Then the, what, what are the functions of the web application? Uh, what kind of data is stored on the central server? And so on, and what kind of intelligence we have in the central server. So we, tr we try to break down the list of functions required for running the system by each device hosting them. And uh, okay, and then now we can decide about the network architecture. So we have the nodes, we have the functions that each of the nodes needs to implement, and so we can start to understand, okay, how do they communicate with each other? Do they have an independent internet connection with public IP addresses? Some, do some of them have uh, private addresses? 
are some of them on a different network, for example, uh, just uh, ZigBee or Z-Wave sensors that have a, a, mesh, a wireless mesh network that doesn't, is not breached to the internet, it's not uh, IP based. So I have a different type of network and they need so to, to have some sort of gateway to connect it and so on. Hmm? So all the requirements uh, about the connectivity of various kinds uh, of uh, each of the devices. So at the end we have this big picture in which we can draw the components of the system. The only thing that we don't know yet is the exact name of each of the components. And this is what uh, the next phase, the next step called the component selection is about. So component selection starts from the system architecture. We have the boxes, we have the connections, we have the function to be implemented by each of the boxes. So we want to identify the actual specific products. I want a Raspberry Pi model such and such. I want a, um, a humidity sensor of this model, this brand, this network protocol. Hmm? And so we need to evaluate uh, cost, integration, functionality, design for it does. So it costs more money, but it's more versatile, it's easier to integrate, uh, and so on. And this trade-off, of, co of course, will be different uh, depending on the situations. If I'm planning to build uh, 1,000 systems, the cost will be a very important driver. If I'm planning to build one prototype, the ease of integration will be the most important drive because I don't lose too much time in trying to integrate it. It may cost a bit more, but it's easier to integrate. So it's a, it's a gain for me if I'm only building one system. So <clears throat> that's why the general architecture may be the same, but the choice of technologies and components may be different uh, in different phases of deployment of the system. Uh, we may have at the beginning something that is implemented in software uh, or in a standard computing platform, and then later we want to move to an embedded system very optimized only for that function. If I'm going to sell volumes, it's, uh, it's economical, it's better, uh, but it will take a lot of time to, to develop, design develop the embedded system. So only after first prototype that runs on, uh, on commercial hardware, even if uh, it may cost uh, 10 times more. Um, usually iterates over the definition of the architecture. So actually when we find, when we are looking for actual components, uh, maybe uh, we discover that the kind of component that we, that we really need here doesn't exist. And so we need to, ch to go back and change something at the architecture level because that function cannot be implemented in that way because that kind of sensor doesn't exist or is it only speaks a protocol different from the protocol that I decided before. So I need to iterate a bit, of course. You, know, you always see that there are these arrows going back uh, to the previous steps saying, okay, maybe at one stage, at one later stage, I discovered that something in earlier stages was not optimal and so I need to go back. It's normal, mm -hmm. don't be scared about that. And uh, about the selection of hardware components, uh, our first choice will always be looking for off-the-shelf components, or the edge, off-the-shelf components. Uh, if we find something in the market, and say, that already does what we need at hard, as a hardware component, let's try, it's, a, uh, it's our first choice. If it's already in the lab, better, still better because we already have that. Otherwise, we have a problem uh, of purchasing that. <laughs> Um, as much as possible, for the ease of integration, try to select components that share the same communication protocol. So even if later we will learn techniques for integrating in a single system different technologies, so we may have one Z-Wave sensor, we another Zigbee sensor, and we can create a system with the two types of sensor at the same time, it will be an additional effort compared to a situation in which both sensors uh, use the same protocol. It's very obvious, but uh, 
when you're selecting components also, take into account the functionality of the component and the ease of integration, always. But there may be cases in which a component uh, like, like we want doesn't exist. And so we need to do a bit of electronics uh, to build one. Hmm? In some cases, it depends on the project. But uh, once you go to the, to the mechanical parts, uh, to the hardware, to the actuation, many times uh, you need actually to, to wire something and to build something. That's why in the lab we have all the wire. We are, we are working uh, in electronics lab, not in a computer science lab. We are not working in LabInf, uh, where all you have only computers. In the display, you have all the boards, the breadboards, the cabling, the Arduinos, and so on, all the sensors, and uh, all the electronics uh, that you need to build, uh, even some small do-it-yourself hardware. Hmm? Try to keep this at minimum, only when really needed. Even if you like doing hardware design, try to keep it at minimum. This is a, not an embedded system course. It's a, it's a systems, general system course not an embedded. So the hardware takes time to develop a board or breadboard, so we do it only when there is no existing alternative. And so this is the, the goal of this stage of component selection. Um, actually, I could uh, uh, say go into more detail with some sort of flowchart. We start with system architecture. So the general picture with all the nodes, and we want to have at the end a bill of material, so a list of items to, to purchase or to, to get for building the system. We have some components that are off the shelf, okay, and some components that we need to build ourselves, so the do-it-yourself components, we decide for each of these do-it-yourself components, uh, it's a small project on itself. We need to define the specifications for this component, what does it do, and uh, uh, split the hardware and the software for that component, and they need to be separate, uh, they need to be designed separately. Usually the hardware would be a Arduino or something like that with some custom sensors, and the software it will be some, some firmware uh, that we load onto that platform in the prototyping world. But for each of the due to self components, it's a small, uh, as I said, it's a small project on itself, whose only scope is just to provide that kind of actuation or that kind of sensing to your project. So let's try to not to spend 70% of your time in developing components, because otherwise you will have a lot of very nice components, but no system to run them hmm? or to manage them. So um, this architecture and the component selection will be the subject of the labor number three, D3. So let's just remember, we are now working, or you are now working on the labor one, the vision. Then you will have later the labor two requirements, functional requirements and non-functional requirements. Later, we do the architecture definition and we work on deliverable tree. You may notice that working on the architecture is the first point in which we are talking about technology, specifying which kind of technology we use, which kind of sensors we use, which kind of protocol we use. In, the, in deliverable two, there is nearly no trace of technology yet. In the tree, of course, we need to, to put all the specific and concrete information to go Farther. And this will be done by the middle of May. Okay, the liberal tree. So remember the, the, the initial schedule uh, March for the liberal one, April for two, and May for three. The liberal tree actually quite uh, quick compared to number two. After that, you are on your own. So we have the specification of the system, we have the architecture, we have the list of components, we have the list of software function, functions that each component must implement. Okay, it's time to implement each of them, one by one. We are in the phase of implementation. 
Implementation means realizing actually the hardware components and the software co components that are part of the architecture that we just defined. At this point, uh, it's possible, it's very easy to parallelize the, word, the work. Uh, we already, have, we should already have all the clear ideas about all the components in the system, so we can build them one by one and uh, each person in the group could start uh, maybe focusing on a different part of the system. Uh, as long as the general picture is clear, it's easy to work uh, in parallel on different aspects. So implementation of the hardware, uh, configuration of the hardware, of the, of the shelf hardware, developing the software and integrating everything. Hmm? So this is the implementation phase. So implementation takes into account all the information we have up to now. System architecture, re deliverable three, requirement document, de deliverable two, and bill of materials, again, deliverable three. So the first and the, the last two pictures here are in D3. And depending on uh, software, hardware, uh, there are different, of course, activities. Uh, software development, uh, of course, you need to, inter to, to develop uh, the sensing part, the acting, the reasoning, the interacting. All, these are all the functions yeah. given by the software implement, you implement. And uh, also for hardware, installation, configuration of all the shared components or implementation of do you talk components. So all of this can be, in a way, parallelized until we have the final, final hardware to run the system. You have roughly something more than one month uh, just for concentrating on this, just for focusing on the implementation, but of course the implementation of some parts can start earlier if you want. <laughs> you know that after Mid-May, we will have practically no classes. All the time it will be for you, for working on your own, for working on the lab. We won't bother you with further classes here. Or we will just have some support in the lab. So it's actually more than one month full time for working on the implementation of a system that hopefully is already well defined. So just plan for that. Um, in the workflow, we also have uh, one so socializing moment, I would say. Uh, so from today, we will start working with every group, trying to support them, and every group will have different needs, of course. So today, we had a, a look at the, whole, at the whole list of projects. So each of you more or less knows what the other have proposed. Um, then you can also peek at the websites of the others, of course, it's not uh, forbidden, but uh, uh, at, the, at the middle of May, towards the end of May, we want to have what we call the final project review. So this comes right after deliverable three. So once we finish all the deliverables, we are asking you to give a short presentation of your project. Huh? Everything should be clear. Of course, the implementation has not started yet, or only some small portion has started. But it's a moment for putting together all the information, all the design choices you made, all the uh, functions that you decided to put, and to give a short presentation. So the idea is that to have, uh, and last year worked quite well, a five minutes presentation per group. So it's a very tight, five minutes is, is, is really short time uh, to present your idea to the other students, to us, of course, and uh, I'm planning to um, invite that day also some external advisors. So people who are not uh, part of this process in the course, and they can hear about your project for the first time, advisor from companies, I mean companies that collaborate with us. So I hope to have some people here that are here to listen to your project and to give some feedback. Um, there will not be enough time to do some discussion, ask questions or whatever, because we have 20 or so projects uh, to present in a, in a couple of hours, five minutes each very, with very tight timing. But I will ask them to compile, to fill in some questionnaire 
about the good points or the bad points about your project and so on and giving some information. And so we will uh, filter this information from the experts and give it to you. Hmm? This is uh, so, uh, something maybe for improving the presentation of the project or how you tell it to other people. It doesn't mean that uh, you need to change your project at this point. Uh, even if there is an external person say, oh, but I think that it should be different. Okay, let them think. Our project is already defined, okay? But, uh, but I think it's, uh, it's nice and it's important also to be, to be able to present the work, the ideas to others hmm? and to start uh, linking with them. Uh, ideally, after the implementation, you will also have uh, a testing phase. Hmm? Uh, normally, the test goes in parallel with the implementation. As you implement something, you need to test it. Uh, ideally, no, development and testing should go hand by hand in small steps. You should verify whether the system works correctly. And also remember to read every now and then the functional requirements again. Because maybe you start implementing something and you implement it in a way that you like, but then in the functional requirements you had wrote something differently. And it was two months ago, two months before. So you might have forgotten, you may have focused too much on the development that you forget why, that, why you need that function on the first place. So you need to check that. Sometimes the requirements will be right and so you need to correct your code. Sometimes your code will be right, and you will understand better. And so you can correct the requirements. It's not forbidden. As long as you know and you do it, uh, you know, um, willingly. Hmm? So this is this uh, double phase of testing. Testing may mean verification. Say, okay, is this uh, procedure correct? Does it crash? Does it compute the real, the, the correct value? And validation is more, is it helpful? Uh, does it contribute to the goal of the project? So one is correctness and the other is usefulness. Does it implement the system correctly? Uh, or does it implement the right system, the correct system, the system that it wanted, or does something different? So you may have something that is correct, but it's not needed, or it's different from what we need. Hmm? So we need to check both, uh, you know, unit testing or uh, testing under different conditions uh, for checking that everything works well in any case, and validation to check against uh, the functional requirements, against the vision of the project. Um, and uh, all of these steps, from the architecture definition, component selection, implementation, and testing are actually a part of one big loop that repeats itself. Hmm? Today, a lot of people are working with so-called agile methodologies. They say, let's start uh, implementing and testing and in parallel defining the architecture as the implementation goes. So implement a, a little part and then test and then implement something else and so on. So don't wait. Don't wait until the end of implementation for starting the test. It will be too late. Hmm? You will find out that the implementation, of course, takes a lot of time. You will run out of time for the exam days. And so in the last days, you won't have time for testing. So you need to do the testing before. Because otherwise, the last days, you will have a lot of software that is not working properly and you won't have the time or the clearness of mind to debug it and to test it. Hmm? So always start earlier and loop over small improvements. Try to have as soon as possible a working system with all the components that only do one stupid thing. And then start adding features. Remember when we discussed about the priority in the functional requirements? That's where it comes handy. So start implementing the first, the most important functional requirement. And make it working, the whole system working, only for the first requirement. 
when it's working, when it's debugged, start adding one by one also the others. So in any time, you have a working system, which is more or less featureful. Maybe only have a, a very few features or many of them. Depends on how much time you progress. So at any time, the clock may stop you and say, okay, I have a system. It's working. Or if I had more time, I could have added more functions. Okay. But in any case, you have a system that implements the most important functions according to the time that you have for developing it. So build the system, implement one function, test it. Implement the second, test. Implement the third one, test it, and so on. Iteratively. Okay. So this is the general uh, idea. In this course, time is tight, so we decided to skip some steps. Uh, there will be no time for user involvement, really. The first time I discussed a lot about the importance of bringing users into the, the conception of the system, into the testing of the early prototypes and so on, but it takes time, times that we don't have, unfortunately, here. So let's try always to keep in mind users, try to have one friend that is an expert on the domain or, uh, of, the, of the system, so to discuss with them whether a choice is good or bad for them, uh, but we don't have time to do some formal user testing or user-centered design. Um, resources should be concentrated on development and testing. So also the, let's say, functional requirement, non-functional requirement specifications should be done minimally. Now, usually if you, if you go and work commercially as software developers, a functional requirement specification is 100 pages minimum. Here will be probably a couple of pages, 20 bullet points. So let's make it simple. We are trying to focus the project. It's already hard. Let's, let's not complicate it further. And uh, in the component selection, we don't have the, the, her, the, the, the word open for us. So every component in the world is good. Let's try to prioritize with the components that we have available in the LADISPE, if possible. Or that maybe you may, have a, you may have personally available to use in the project. Uh, okay, so this is the, the general summary about the dates. So the, the title and goal is something that we have for tomorrow. You have until the end of March for the vision, which is, you said, a, a, an extended version of the title. We don't have, uh, you see, we don't have anything that covers the requirement elicitation, so the, all the user interviews and so on. If you can do it informally, you know, there are the Easter vacations there, so you, you will meet a lot of people which are not in the Polytechnico. So it's a good test uh, for, uh, for explaining to other people about your idea and uh, explaining how crazy you are and maybe getting good, good ideas in return to integrate in your vision document. Then you have most of April for doing the analysis. Uh, analysis means uh, functional requirements and non-functional requirements. And uh, Another three weeks for the system design, which means system architecture, hardware architecture, and software architecture. And then after that, all the implementation phase. You see that I left out somewhat the test and validation and the user testing because they are out of scope. We only need to get to a prototype, not to validate it with, I don't know, trials with 20 or 100 users. It just needs to work once, on the day of the exam. Well, twice, on the day of the exam and on the day of the showcase in September. Hmm? But if it works always, it's better, okay. So this is the simplified process that we have. Um, just to point out, all the deliverables are part of the website. So at the end, of every deadline, we will check your websites and try to find this information. You can split the way you want, where you want, how you like most. 
we are looking whether the information is there and what is written there in the information, not how it's organized. So organize it as you, as you prefer. So all the, in, say, interaction will be always through GitHub. Don't send us anything via mail. They will be deleted uh, instantly. Uh, and so all the communication is on the public website. So the public website will grow as your project goes and uh, will be used also for us to evaluate and provide feedback. Uh, as with the deliverable one, we also provide and explain templates for deliverable two and three, of course. And uh, for every stage, we'll provide feedback, usually in the lab. So right now we had all the, the general discussion, but then what we do usually is uh, in the next Monday after the, um, the, the deadline, the deliverable deadline, we come to the lab and while you work on your project, we go group by group and comment our feedback, our ideas, our uh, say issues about your deliverable. So that we don't lose time altogether while we are going group by group, uh, the others can continue to work on that project. So our, that's our main goal, no? to, to give you time to work on the project. Uh, the general rule is, if you are late, if you are late with a deadline, we won't check, okay? We don't care and we won't check. If you are late with a deadline, you are missing the opportunity to receive feedback. That's it, nothing more. When, when we give feedback, say, okay, this is not clear, try to be more explicit or something like that, or try to add something, it's a suggestion to you. We won't check whether you do it, okay? It's not that we, we don't iterate until we are happy. We give, we give one feedback, and then you should be happy with your project, okay? So do what you want, it's in your interest to um, measure the deadlines and to make the corrections that we suggest you. We will evaluate, so the formal evaluation of the deliverables will be at the exam day. So you can do whatever you want during the course. If you keep the deadlines, we will keep ours so we can go in sync. But if you are late for some reason, we won't go after you. We won't run after you. Okay, it's your choice. At the exam, some days before, we will check the website and check it from scratch, a new. Say, okay, let, we will check for a website from, for when, sorry, for the information that should be in the deliverables. So you have all the time for improving the website, the deliverable and so on, in your time. The, the formal check will be some days, uh, we will set up the, the deadline also, before the exam. At that point, we will check the website again. So even if uh, on the first uh, deadline, in deliverable one or two, you get a very bad feedback, uh, nothing is wrong, uh, nothing right, everything's wrong, you need to redo uh, uh, um, everything, don't worry. You need to redo it better by the exam time. Hmm? We want to record the score in the intermediate course. Okay, we are, we are like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Okay, during the course, we are Dr. Jekyll. We try to help you. At the exam, <laughs> we, we, we switch a bit. Hmm? And uh, so it's our job. Um, do we have anything more? No, okay. Okay, do you have any question about the process? So this is uh, what should drive us. Um, just remember that in the first column, let's not speak technology. In the second one, we may use some technology terms uh, in the definition of the architecture and so on. So try really to, to follow that. 
Okay, if you don't have any questions, we may close the class now. We are a bit early, but it's okay. It's not worth starting another topic. So we, have, we, we may also have some more time here now uh, to discuss about the project. Okay, see you on Monday. Oh, there's a question, sorry, yeah? This is your evaluation on the project on the Google Docs. Now, can we still modify the projects and uh, yes. or how many days we have left uh, to we give the final project for evaluation? Yeah, so the question is, uh, for the people who have uh, maybe a yellow project uh, or need to modify it, uh, what is the timing and uh, how to proceed? So, um, as I said, the deadline was yesterday. So we, are, we gave our feedback, and the sooner you reply, is better for you. Okay, so uh, you have some days, try to, I, I would prefer it uh, of a higher quality, even if, if it's a couple of days late. So don't hurry too much to write something, try to come up with, a, with an improved proposal. Let you show them some days or a week or what you need. Uh, the more time you spend on this topic, the less time you will have, you will have for the level one. So it's a better of finding the good balance for you. Uh, once you have a, an improved text, a reward project, uh, you send it to us. Uh, I, I don't know whether we, we reopen the document or, or just send via, via email. Let, let's decide, I don't know yet, which is the best way. And so that we can check it again and say, okay, now it's green, go on. When we, when we say it's green, go on, you can copy it to the new, the final project document and start uh, working. And so we can create a repository and, and everything else. Okay, so try to take your ideas, take the feedback, think, discuss about you, maybe if you need, discuss with us, and write a new proposal, an improved proposal. You send it to us, and when we say it's okay, you can copy the proposal to the new Google Doc, and then it's approved for, for good. Hmm? We had three projects uploaded, and one of them was green, the other two are red, so we also came up with another two projects, but previously. So can we switch the other two red to the other two, and you, can, you may reevaluate them as well? Uh, let's speak maybe I'll just with you on, the, on, this, on this issue. Right now, yeah, okay. Just, just because of the, uh, uh, usually if a group has a green project, the suggestion is go ahead with the green project. No, but it's very similar to other. Uh, yes, but it's a, it's a, on a case by case, uh, so we can discuss it after we close the, the record. Hmm? Is that a question? Where is the There's a link on the, on the website. On the WhatsApp, you have the link to the old one and to the new one. Hmm? I don't know it by heart, sorry. Yeah. 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 Oh, yes. The, the, the question was, uh, um, where is the link to the new Google Doc? I said it was, it's, uh, it is, not it will be on the website uh, of the course. So here. Groups and projects, we have the old shared document for submitting project ideas, we, where you can also still find the, the, the comments, the evaluation, which is today's document, and the new document for final ideas. So if you have a, an approved project, once you have an approved project, just paste it into this second document. How many days do you have to come up with a new proposal? We set no specific deadline. Okay, there is no specific deadline. The, the sooner the better, but uh, you know, take your time to come up with a good proposal. Uh, I, I don't need to have something tomorrow morning, which is basically the same thing as today. So if uh, we have some comments or some uh, negative feedback, uh, it, it's for you to reason about that. Hmm? Okay, thank you.